Hello there, it's Sandy Olnock, and I'm drawing lanterns today. And there are three different perspectives, one that's more head-on-ish, one that's at an angle, and one that's looking upward. And I'll show you how to draw all of those, and I'll color them in aqua markers. These are water-based markers from Sketchmarker. And I also have another version that's a little on the crazier side. I'll show you some clips of that. And there's a giveaway at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. We're going to go through these lanterns in an easy, medium, and hard fashion. Easy one first. These are all going to be in real time, so you can maybe follow along. First, draw a rectangle. Just a rectangle the size and shape of whatever the glass piece is, and add a base and a cap to it if you would like. If it's perfectly straight on, you won't see the two posts in the back, but we want to be able to see those to make it look dimensional. So that dot at the top is the vanishing point. And that's where you draw a line to the two corners at the bottom. And that's how you can determine by making a horizontal line where you can see into the inside. So we're basically lifting up the perspective to see from a little bit higher up. Next, draw the two posts in the back because now you can see them because they're in a little bit. If you wanted to make the top of the rectangle square then, and make it flat, then you could use that vanishing point to do that. We're not going to do that for this one. We're going to make it even easier. Just make whatever kind of shape cap you want it. If you want a triangle, if you want a round one, if you want to give it a little flounce like I did, whatever. It's all fine. Erase a little piece of the back line of that, that bottom part of the lantern, and then you can add in the candle. And I'm going to add another base piece underneath. You can do whatever you want with that. Make these as fancy or as simple as you would like, and a hook on the top. Since I was drawing these in a mixed media sketchbook, I thought I'd use some water-based markers to color them. I'll give you some ideas on that. To color a flame, the flame is actually white. And white flame on a white paper doesn't look very good. So I put a little yellow at the base of the flame and then watered out some of the yellow around the flame, which helps it to look a bit more white, by comparison at least. Then I just added random strokes of a couple of different desaturated colors, meaning the colors are a little grayer. If you use like yellow and pink, then they won't look very vintage. And I wanted these to look sort of distressed and rusty. So I'll be using just a selection of different kinds of colors from this sketch marker set that I've got. And then when that's all done, go in with a, an aqua brush or a regular paintbrush and move the color. And since these are colors that I want to mush around, it's going to be really easy to just swoosh over top of the color and let them blend as they feel like. Leaving a few just little tiny places where you don't do any watercoloring can help to look like you've created some highlights. Don't worry about where they are. Just, you know, leave some spots here and there and let the water do the work. If you're working and it's not moving very much, then it's either the paper or you've let the ink dry too much because most water-based markers, they want to be watercolored right away or close to right away. So if you've got that problem, then you might want to work a little quicker. Just work on one section at a time or test out different markers on different papers that you've got. For the inside of the, the lantern here, I'm putting some darker color. It's actually black, believe it or not. Black that looks a little bluish and merging it in with the candle so then it starts to look like they belong together. And there is a little white line there, which helps to define some light on that. If you can keep that, great. If not, don't worry about it. And then I'm using some water to just touch the bottom, the base of that lantern, to give it a, almost a little reflection on the surface of the paper. So give it, give it a little bit of grounding. Next, we're gonna draw a lantern in two-point perspective. And we're gonna start with the edge that faces us. So the edge that's closest. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to use those two corners of the boxes on the left and right as my vanishing points. So I'm going to go from the bottom and the top of this line and point out to those, those corners. And that's going to give me the perspective at this particular angle. If you move those, those two 
vanishing points, which have to be parallel to each other horizontally, then you're going to actually get a different perspective. So where you put those is going to make a difference. So try it a bunch of different ways and see what works. So I've got the, the box basically built, which is what you need when you're going to do a lantern. And to do the inside of the box, like we did on the other one, we want to draw lines from those front corners to those, uh, those vanishing points. And that's going to give us the inside rectangle. Same thing for the top. If you were to make a box that had a top on it, you would make it the same way, just connecting all those corners to the outside, to those vanishing points. But we're not going to do that. So I erase those lines and we're going to make just a round top on it. It's like a mailbox. This looks like an arch, just the whole thing, the whole rectangle down below and the circles at the top make an arch in the front and the back. But I want to check the perspective on what I did to make that top in pr proper perspective. I need to move that back one up just a little bit. So that's where those vanishing points can be of help. I typically just kind of make up my vanishing points. I imagine them in my head, but it may be helpful if you're beginning at vanishing points and perspective to draw those out. Notice that they might be on the paper like these are, but they might also be like way off the paper, miles off the paper. So it depends on the perspective you're drawing. So I'm going to draw the candle inside and it's going to be behind that post in the front. So I need to think about that. And for the top oval or the top circle, they would be the top of the candle. I drew lines out to those perspective lines in order to figure out where that oval is going to be, what angle that's going to be at, how squished is it? So that is also part of perspective. I will also color this one in the water base markers. Just as I did before with the flame, coloring a little bit at the base of the flame itself and then spreading that color around. So the, the white of the flame looks a little whiter. And since I'm going to be drawing with darker colors for the posts, I didn't have to worry about trying to work around those posts. I'm just going to draw right over top of the candle. So it made it easier to both use the marker and the brush to color them in. And then it's going to be the fun part, which is letting all the colors mix to create the sort of rustic vintage looking metal and practice with all different kinds of color combinations. You may find one that you like better. You want something that's maybe more red or more brown, more gray, more greenish, all different kinds of fun color combinations can make any object that you're drawing look like it's vintage and grungy. And I'm going to try to leave some white spots here and there as well on this one, just like I did on the last. I think I was more successful on the first one, but just letting those colors mix and have a good time, adding a, a little detail here and there, a little tick mark that, that makes a little edge to the cap the hood on the lantern, etc. For the bottom part here, the base was very wet and I added a lot of water. And watch what happens. It just gets a little out of control. So be careful. Even if the marker is dry, you're going to get some movement and the wetter it is and the more ink there is from the marker, the more color you're going to get. And I wanted to make sure I brought that up high enough to make it look like it could be sitting on a table reasonably. Then for the base on the inside, I made it dark. So I just put more color in there and then decided I wanted to blend the candle in a little bit more. So I just pulled some of that color up into the candle. It just makes all that area a little more mushy and doesn't really need to be fussed with a lot. The post in the back side is just a little tiny hint of it showing there. And the hook on the top, that round hook is just an oval. I decided to use a black marker to just add a few details here and there, including my initials. You can, you know, write a date on there if you're using this for a birthday card or something. Uh, lots of different things that you can do with a little lantern like this. So next up is drawing a lantern from below. This is much more of a street lantern, which you would be looking up at. So the vanishing points are going to be below the image. Remember last time they were above the image. Now they're going to be below, but 
This one on the right hand side has to be parallel to the one on the left, but it has to be out off the paper. And sometimes it's on the table next to where you're working. It's not really somewhere you can see. I just happen to choose a spot so you could see it on video, but it's not always going to be really close. It's not going to be always on your paper. So I've made the, the two uh, the two lines going out to the corners, and then I'm going to do the base of it. I want to see how much from underneath that we're going to see the base of this lantern. So you can see that that diamond shape at the bottom. That is the bottom that we're looking at. We're looking up at it. And then you could make the two lines parallel, and then it's a lamp that's a box. But most of those lanterns, those street lanterns, are not boxes. They're going to be at an angle a little bit. So I'm using a stick eraser to get rid of those, and I'm going to make them at angles. This is not perspective. These are the shapes of the actual lantern. You know, they kind of flare out a little bit. They're wider at the top than they are at the bottom. So now I'm going to go into that one and draw the lines out to the vanishing points so that I can see what the shape is going to be underneath. There's a, a shape underneath that we're going to be able to see through the glass into the lantern. So we had to, had to create both the bottom tri bottom diamond and the top diamond. In the center of it, which may not be in the center of your lantern, is where the, the post goes. It's the middle of the whole thing. If you want to measure that to make sure, then go for it. And you can draw your top on it and any fancy fleur-de-lis or anything that you want to add to yours. Make it as simple or as complex as you would like. And once that part's done, all you need to do is worry about getting the candle in there. So you can decide what kind of candle, how big. I made mine a very short one. So it's just the stubbiness of the candle peeking up from the bottom and the flame above it. So to color this one in water-based markers, a little more complex than the others. But I'm going to start with the same principle of coloring the yellow first, because that's going to help to set the tone for this, have that yellow undertone that I can color over top of when I start working on the rest of the dark colors. The section at the very top, I erased the pencil lines because I wanted to put some yellow in there because there is a candle lighting it up. If you were not having a light in there, if you were looking at this lantern during the day, that would all be dark inside that cap. Since we're working on something here, I wanted to make sure I had the light coming up from the candle itself. As I started putting this, these pen lines in, I realized that yellow was still wet and I didn't want to take a chance on anything bleeding. So I got out my heat gun and started blow drying that so that I could actually work without fear. And then threw a couple of different colors in there as I had in the others to create the outlines of the lantern and letting the those dark lines in the inside fade out so they're not going to be solidly seen through. When you're looking through glass, you're going to see something a little lighter than you would see if you were looking at it without glass in between you and the object. So then I just started using the brush to move the color around and to make the, the lines of the marker. You can leave lines of the marker by itself, but it tends to look more watercolory to me to make sure everything's been painted over, even if it's just a line. And then I'm trying to leave some lighter color in that center so that it looks like I have the fleur-de-lis there, even though it's facing directly at the viewer, so you don't really get a view of exactly what shape it is. You can see the shape by looking at the ones on the sides, but not that one in the middle. So water out all the rest of those. And I'm using a silver brush, by the way, it's a number eight. It's a little big for this, but it's what was right at hand when I started working on these sketches. So I'm using a tip to tip technique to paint a little bit of a sky in there. I'm not going for a really dark sky because I have a dark lantern, but I'm just painting a little bit of color in there so that you get an idea of what you would have to do if you see color in behind it. Some of that glass is going to be transparent and show you the sky. So I had to put a sky in there so we could see how that would play out. And since this is water-based marker, everything got a little bleedy right there. But, you know, it's my sketchbook, so it's okay. It's, it's a great place to practice so that when you go to do a finished project, if you're going to do it in that medium, you'll have an idea whether it will work. 
So here's what I'm doing. I'm using just a little bit of that color to come through in some of those sections of the glass. I decided the underside of that hood on the lantern needed a little bit more oomph to it, needed a little more depth. So I put color in the corners and then just did a light wash over top of that yellow. So the yellow is still coming through. You still get the feeling that the candle is lighting it up, but it has a little more depth to it, which is quite nice. I like the outcome of that. Aside from the base at the bottom, all of my little fleur de -lis got a little washed out there, but sketchbooks are just for that, aren't they? So I also did a card version of this and I did something else crazy to it. And I have shared that video with my patrons. So there's a, a portal to outer space inside of a lantern. So <laughs> that is over on my Patreon page if you wanna see that video. But let's get to the original piece that started me in on lanterns and talking about lanterns and studying lanterns and looking at perspective on lanterns. And that's this graphite drawing that I worked on a few days ago. It took me several days to get it done. It was quite the epic thing. And I had an idea in my head for this black on black kind of drawing with just spectacular light coming from the lantern itself. And I thought graphite would be a good way to do that. And I had some new pencils that I thought I'd try, which are these Faber-Castell uh, pencils. They're supposed to be matte, so they aren't supposed to be shiny. And that was true. They are not shiny. They're also not as dark. This one is a 10B. And it does not get even close to as dark as my regular 9B, but my 9B is reflective. So, you know, hit or miss on which thing is more important to you at the time. I tried the powdered pencil technique using the 10B and it didn't work all that great. Here's what a 9B looks like. This little section right here I did in my, my regular 9B Karen Dash pencils. It's much, much darker. I just wanted to test them side by side, but I went back to the matte pencils because that was the object of trying to do this drawing was to see how well this worked and whether or not I could film it or take pictures of it and and would the matte pencils work out better. I quickly changed my mind though on that background because that 10B was not working. It did not get nice and rich and black for me. Even using linseed oil to blend with it didn't do much. So I got out my nitrum charcoal. It's powdered charcoal. So it is messy. My hands were messy. My studio was messy. <laughs> Everything was messy. But once it was all done, I felt better about moving on with the drawing. So I finished doing the, the overdrawing of the stand for the lamp uh, in the black pencils. And then was finally able to get to the center part, which was going to be the funnest part adding little critters because I had this thought in my head. I, I saw a lantern and I just wondered if there were ever any little critters that discovered that there is a source of warmth in these lanterns. And so I drew a couple of mice having a lovely time roasting marshmallows inside of a nice toasty warm lantern. And maybe they'll have the idea once they see this video, all the mice will go and jump in the lanterns now and begin to roast marshmallows in there, have little parties. As I started putting some shading into the lantern itself, so you could see some of the sky through the glass, I also realized the snow on top of the lantern needed to be darkened because if it's snowing, there's no moon out there that's shining on the snow. So it would not have much light hitting it from the top. It would have some light from the bottom from that lantern. So I had to darken that with a bunch of the powdered pigment again and then decided to finish off the snow. I was using two different techniques. One is a kneaded eraser. So those are the more distant snowflakes that are not getting lit up quite as strongly as the ones that'll be closer to the lantern itself. And for those, I started using the electric eraser. So it doesn't work really great when you've already used some of the linseed oil on it, but it worked somewhat. And I think I have more snow work to do on this. I, I don't think I'm quite finished with it, but I was happy enough to at least try to get it to film here in a corner of my studio that didn't have light shining on it. Anyway, I want to finally get to the giveaway. 
which is this set of Sketch Marker Aqua. They sent me the full set so that I would have more colors to choose from, which means I still have this set available and would like to give it away. So you need to go over to my blog. I do giveaways here on YouTube and like nobody ever responds to me. So it's on my blog. There's a link in the doobly-doo to go find out how you can enter by clicking through and going to see it on the blog. And that is about it for right now. I will see you again next week. I still have two videos coming, even though it is Christmas time. So I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.